So the idea that Dana doesn't care about Nate because he's giving him a big ass fight on his way out is stupid. That's a fight Nate wanted. And Nate has back in point. I assume Nate has points on the pay-per-view. Are you going to buy that pay-per-view? You are right. I know. So he, so Dana is hooking him up. If they wanted to screw him, if they wanted to screw Nate, they, they gave him a nobody. Like, Bottom line, if they wanted to screw Nate over, they'd give him a nobody. All right, Jesse on fire. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to talk about Nate Diaz and Hamza. Again, I know. I know. Guess what? I got some new news for you guys. At least new news. Uh, well, no, just new news. There's just some new news. And, uh, and then also I want to talk about how people are talking about this fight because I agree with Michael Bisping. People are talking nonsense, dude. Like, they are talking nonsense. I hear so much nonsense about this fight that it's kind of unbelievable, to be honest with you. So we're going to talk about those things because everyone has this wrong. Everyone has this wrong. Everyone has this wrong. And I'm not just talking about, like, the thing that I said before, you know, oh, you know, Nate's for sure going to win this fight. And I was saying, like, you know, because he wins either way, whether he wins or loses. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about how people are characterizing this fight in, you know, aside from, well, I'll get into it. Just bear with me. It'll be a good video, I promise. So before I do, though, if you like the content, subscribe and ring the bell. We are sponsored by Yo Kratom. If you don't know what Kratom is, then don't worry about it. But if you do, Yo Kratom has every strain you could ever want. $60 a kilogram. And I would challenge you to go find what the pricing is that you are paying right now through any other means. And guess what? It's just as good or better. I just got a shipment the other day, two kilograms. And if you guys are asking yourself, well, when was the last time that he said he got a big shipment? Don't be counting my Kratom, dude. Don't be doing it. Don't worry about what I do with it. Anyway, but uh, YoKratom.com. That is your, your new supplier, whether you knew it or not. So here's the deal, okay? So there's news out that Nate has signed his contract, okay? So I did a video last night. Has he actually signed? Hamza Shemaev had said he has no idea whether he signed. And I'm like, well, that's not a good sign uh, about whether or not he signed, right? But apparently he has signed. Ariel Helwani has reported that he signed. Congratulations, Nate and Hamzat and everyone else who is a fan of this sport. It's on. I guess that means it's on. Woo! Now, a couple things I want to talk about here, right? So Dana did a, did a press conference talking about Nate. And he was like, I care about Nate. Like, I really like him. And people have been like, like people's response to that have been like, Oh, he cares about him so much that he threw him to Hamzat Shemaev on his last fight. Oh my God. Oh my God. It's like, dude, do you really think that Dana is doing a disservice to Nate? Really? Like, do you act, like, is that what you really think? And I realize, like when I look around the interweb for what people think, that is what they think. Like people think that they are completely just screwing Nate, right? Like totally screwing Nate. They're like, like I saw Dan Hardy call it an assassination attempt. Uh, I think the, the kind of widely accepted narrative here is that Nate is going to get absolutely demolished. And uh, like that may or may not be true, maybe, but what does that have to do with the fight business? And what does that have to do with Nate? Like what, I mean, I mean, I know like, okay, yeah, he might lose the fight, but like what, what does that have to do with Nate, Dana saying that he cares about Nate or the, the fight business in general, right? Here's the only question you should ever be asking yourself when it comes to a fight getting made. Literally the only one barring totally extreme examples. Are people going to be excited to pay money to watch this fight, whether it be live or on pay-per-views? Because if they are, guess what? Okay, Dana and the brass have done their job. That's their only job. Okay, their only job is creating fights that we want to see. Okay, that's it. It is one of the simplest job descriptions in the world. Now, the complexity of making it actually happen obviously is very high, but the you understand what I'm saying? Like, unless they're having Valentina Shevchenko fight against Francis Ngannou, you know, if you got two fighters, two professionals in the UFC fighting in the same weight class, there is no fight you can make that is like 
and, and it's just like it's like an assassination again. The guy has to agree to the fight. Okay, let me ask you this. Let me ask you just a common sense question here. Okay, so do you think that? No, let's just assume that Nate has very little chance of winning the fight. Let's just say that, right? All right. And so how's he going to lose? Well, well, I don't know. Let's just, be, let's say he gets taken down and he gets punched in the face a bunch. And then maybe when he's rattled, he gets his back taken and gets strangled, you know, or let's say he just gets, you know, punched a lot. And then he, you know, they TKO him. All right. All right. All right. Now, why do you think that Hamzat is more likely to do that than any other fighter? Well, he's better. He's faster. He's younger. He's incredibly skilled on the ground, et cetera. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Now, let me name a bunch of fighters in the top 10 that I would imagine lots of people would pick over Nate Diaz. Sean Brady is a similar matchup, right? They're, I mean, like, this is like I mean, pick, pick someone. Do you think that Nate is going to take tremendously more punishment in the Hamzat Shemaya fight than he would versus anyone else? Is that honestly what everyone thinks? You know, like, is that like, is that, that's the, that's the hypothesis that like, because Hamzat's better and is more likely to win, then that means he's going to inflict more damage on Nate than another guy who would win in the fight. That's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. That's just stupid. Nate's not going to take more damage losing to Hamzat than he would losing to someone else. If you're, you know, assuming that he loses. Now, do you think that Nate is in such bad shape that he couldn't take a single other UFC loss? Of course not. He fought Leon Edwards in his last fight, got shellacked for five rounds and was still so in the zone and good to go that he almost knocked Leon out with a minute left in the fight. He's a gamer, dude. He's going to be fine. Like Nate's going to be fine. So the idea that Dana doesn't care about Nate because he's giving him a big ass fight on his way out is stupid. That's a fight Nate wanted. And Nate has back in point. I assume Nate has points on the pay-per-view. Are you going to buy that pay-per-view? You are right. I know. So it's so Dana's hooking him up. If they wanted to screw him, if they wanted to screw Nate, they, they gave him a nobody. Like, Bottom line, if they wanted to screw Nate over, they'd give him a nobody. They gave him Hamza Shemaev. They gave him a fight he's unlikely to win to protect themselves as a business against him getting some huge blockbuster win and then going and using his new notoriety to fight against Jake Paul. Now, I've made my opinion on this clear that I think either way, win or lose, Nate is going to come out a bigger star. So like, you know, it doesn't really matter whether he wins or loses. But certainly a win's better than a loss, you know? Certainly better. Like, I think he's look, what I'm saying is going to be a net positive either way, but a win is better than a loss. 100 out of 100 times, a win is better than a loss. So, yeah, Dana didn't do him wrong. They hooked him up with a great opponent with a big name coming off a big fight. So, yeah, I just like, and it's, and it's not the UFC's job to protect Nate Diaz. That's not, you think the UFC is in the business of protecting professional fighters? That's their job. The UFC sets specific rules that the fighters fight under weight class, you know, pass the medicals, rounds, referees, judges, etc. They set the terms that everyone agrees to fight under, and then they choose per their own volition to go in and fight or not fight. They have to sign a bout agreement and they're saying who the fight is against. Like the UFC doesn't, as we now know, the UFC has no hold over Nate. He has a sunset clause. He doesn't have to sign that contract. He doesn't have to fight Hamza. So like, again, the UFC made a, made a calculated decision to give him an opponent he's unlikely to beat, but they gave him a real big fight, dude. They gave him a real big fight. Now, one other thing I wanted to talk about, a big thing I wanted to talk about is this. So when there was... <clears throat> I'm going to assume that Ariel's report is correct and that Nate has signed his contract. But when there was conversation that Nate maybe had not signed his contract, I had this realization where I was like, oh my gosh, you want to talk about 4D chess, dude. Check this out. Now, sometimes I will apply higher level strategy to a move than maybe there was. But I give Hunter Campbell a lot of credit when it comes to playing the game just because I've watched him work. And he's a high-level player, extremely high-level player. 
Very impressive. And so, like I've talked about, when they announced Nate and Hamzat for UFC 279 and Nate did not respond for a day, I don't care if he signed now, I am still going to say highly likely he had not even really like agreed to that fight. He had said publicly that he would fight anyone. They press released it. It's like, what are you going to do now, Nate? You know, what are you going to do now? Because, he, and, and here's, here's what I realized. In the event that he hadn't signed, the UFC knows, you know, like if he hadn't signed, the UFC knows that there's a, there's a, there's at least a chance that he doesn't sign. Here's the thing about that. The second they announce the fight, they have the upper hand because if Nate doesn't sign, that's the worst thing he could do for his brand. Like, because right now, what the, what the actual battle is between the UFC and Nate is about the value of his brand. And like I said, as, as long as he shows up, it's going to be a net positive for him, win or lose. But if he didn't show, right? Like if he didn't show up. Now, I don't, I'm not sure if the, the UFC agrees with me on that, though. I think the UFC thinks if he gets his face smashed in, it's going to diminish his brand because that tends to be the rule. Just I don't think so in this case. I think this is a, an exception. But... The second that they announce that fight, they put Nate in a box where in the event that Nate does not sign and does not show up, that damages his brand. That's the only way Nate could actually have damaged his brand at that point is if he didn't sign that contract and he didn't show up. And then he went and tried to fight Jake Paul and everyone would be like, bro, because you know how much more excited everyone is to watch him fight Hamzat than they are to how much, I mean, at least me. If you're like, hey, would you rather watch Nate Diaz fight Hamzat Shemaev or Jake Paul? I'd be like, I mean, that's like asking me if I'd rather have $100,000 or $200,000. Like, who would say $100,000 to that? You know what I mean? Like, who would, who would say that? Like, here, you can have $1 million or $3 million. You're all, that's the totality of the choice? Yeah, yeah. $1 million or $3 million. You're all, I'm going to go with $3 million. Oh, Awesome. They're all, would you rather see him fight Hamza Shemaev in MMA or Jake Paul in boxing? It's like, uh, I would rather see him watch, <laughs> rather watch him fight Hamza Shemaev in MMA for sure. Well, why? I don't know. Why do you want $3 million instead of $1 million? It's, is that even a question? If I'm a combat sports athlete, like a combat sports fan, which, which fight I would rather watch? Really? Really? What possible upside is there in a Jake Paul fight over a Hamza Tsumayev MMA fight? And, and I told you, I'm a Jake Paul fan. I like Jake Paul. I think he's, I think he's uh, making waves and doing what you know, a good fight promoter does, or self-promoter also. He's obviously an exceptional fight promoter. Or I'm sorry, self-promoter and fight promoter. But like, yeah. I, I think Jake Paul would rather watch him fight Hamzat than fight himself. Anyway, just more thoughts. And that is what I've got. I love you guys. Peace.